Okay, what do we have here? We have juniper berries, we have caraway seeds, and we have bacon lardons. Hmm. Must be white cabbage. Boring old white cabbage, but not anymore, folks. Just watch this. Not so boring now, are you? I think it's getting the impression that something's going to happen to it. If you hear any banging in the background, by the way, that's uh, because tonight is the 5th of November, and in Great Britain that's a bit of a sort of a, a holiday of sorts because. Many, many years ago, someone called Guy Fawkes decided he was going to blow up Parliament and he was hung, drawn, quartered and burned at the stake for being a traitor. In my opinion, he's the only one that ever entered Parliament with good intentions, but there you go. Um, right. So in goes the cabbage. Very quick to do this. You see how I'm doing it. So first of all, I do the old trick, you know, I, I, I get it, split it in half and then work with it in quadrants, um, halves, then quadrants. And then bits like this that you normally throw away, you're going to throw that away, aren't you? Not me. Don't waste a thing. And I just go in like that, cut it up. These are very delicious, these stalks. You don't need that last bit because it's a bit woody, but these bits are delicious and they add flavour to it, you don't want to waste it. It's about a good quarter pound of uh, decent cabbage in those. And uh, if you eat things like kohlrabi, um, that's all it is, it's just this that's been developed uh, by selective, um, what's the word, selective you know, genetic breeding, whatever you want to call it. The word will come to me in a minute. And um, they select, they just, turn it into kohlrabi because people enjoyed eating that bit so much. My mum always said eat it because it's like apple. Alright, whatever. Okay, so what, what we've got now is, um, is a full pot full of that delicious white cabbage. Um, typically when that cooks, it cooks down to about around about half the size in the pot. So when you're starting to put water in there, bear that in mind because you only really want to bring the water up to that level. You don't want too much water in there. Um, and then the next thing we do, a uh, little known fact, uh, but very common in Eastern European cookery, um, is the use of caraway seeds and cabbage. Um, caraway seeds impart a delicious flavour into cabbage and what I would do with a pot that size, I would take a generous pinch, and just to show you what that has looked like, um, there, and perhaps another one for all this. So, if you look in, if you want to see, if you want facts and figures, I would say it's about a heat teaspoon, and just drop them in there. Um, you're probably not used to the smell of that while it's cooking, but the taste of it is absolutely superb. And another thing that goes exceptionally well with cabbage is juniper berries. And for an amount of that, that sort of size, I would grab, you know, a little sort of half teaspoon towards to a teaspoon full of juniper berries. Uh, juniper berries, uh, juniper is the flavouring that, that you get in gin. Um, and but, but it is well known for being excellent with cabbage. What I do with those is I just put the blade on them, smash it down until they break up, and then I give them a little chop, just a little one, careful because they get a bit athletic when you start chopping. Um, but there you go. And then literally just smash them up a little bit and throw them in the pot. Um, as for the bacon, uh, we need the bacon later because um, what we do is we... we, we um, boil and dry that. We don't overcook it but we, we boil it and then we drain it 
and then in the same pot we fry the bacon until it's crispy and then toss it all back in. So does that sound good? Right, the next time you see me we'll be at the cooker over there and we'll be uh, cooking it. Okay, a uh, bit of wisdom here again. Um, we're not boiling the water in the pot, we boil it in the kettle and add it to the pot. Um, you'll notice I might not, you, you might notice I've not added any uh, salt uh, at this stage and that is because um, we're adding all that bacon to it and all that flavour in the bacon will be quite salty so I want to see how salty that is before I, I add uh, to that mix. Um, before I add any salt, I don't want to end up with it just tasting of nothing but salt. So I'm going to cook it without salt to begin with. I'm just checking that's coming up to about halfway and we're about there. That's a good little splash more. Alright, that's that done. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to boil, Got a get a rapid boil on it, uh, put the lid on and let let it boil and let it steam for about 10-15 uh, minutes. Uh, you don't want it to overcook, you know, the, I, I have horror stories about people who cook cabbage for an hour and a half and they end up tipping all the goodness down the sink, you know, the best fed member of the family is their kitchen sink because they're tipping all the goodness out of the pot into the sink. Another trick the old girls used to use was to put um, baking soda or um, bicarbonate of soda in the uh, to preserve the green, yeah, it, it preserves the green all right, but it doesn't preserve the vitamins, so leave that little tip out, yeah. Um, just crack on with um, natural food, cook the natural way. Okay, we'll come back as soon as that's um, boiled. Now back to the cabbage. Right, let's have a look at this. Well, that's cooked through for certain. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit out there and take it. Mm. Even in that little bit, the taste of the junipers come through um, and the taste of the caraway seeds have come through. Um, it's really delicious. I'm going to drain this now. That has a tendency to fog up the camera, so um, I'll bring it back and show you that when it's ready to go in the pan with the uh, bacon. All right. Okay, back to the cabbage. I'm putting about, again, just a little more than a tablespoon of oil into the pan uh, and we're going to cook the bacon in it. Let's get that in. Maybe it could have been a bit hotter because you really want a nice strike heat on that. And get the, um, get the bacon in and sizzling. And I'll get back to you in a minute as soon as that starts to cook off. Yeah, you'll see I've got it in a very large uh, frying pan. It's almost like a wok this thing, but um, I'm, I'm doing that more for demonstration and instructional purposes. But the uh, you can do it in, in an ordinary um, um, stock pot or or a, um, a large stew pan. Um, And then you add the cabbage back into it as soon as the as soon as you've managed to get a nice uh, turn on the bacon. So that's cooking away nicely now. And what you do is you get it sizzling like this, and, and you don't want it, you don't want it to go way too fast. You, you just want it to allow the bacon to crisp up a little bit. So uh, I'm going to come back to you again in a couple of minutes once that's started to brown nicely. Okay, right, the bacon's coming up to a nice uh, little crisp, starting to brown off nicely. And more importantly, a lot of that delicious um, fat has come off and it's gone into the oil, so that's what's going to flavour this cabbage. It's not too much considering the huge amount of cabbage we've got here. And we tip the cabbage, 
straight away into there. So that's the cabbage drained. And I just put it back in the pot to store it. So there was a little bit of runoff of uh, water, but not much. Um, because the cabbage was already drained when I put it in the pot. So the next thing to do, I'll put that out of the way. And the next thing to do is get my tongs out with a retired spoonzilla. And we're gonna get the tongs in, get this moving around a bit. This kitchen's entirely the wrong shape for me to do videos, you know that, don't you? But never mind. Okay. If you if you like what you see, make sure you put a comment below uh, because it's the only way I've got to gauge whether or not it's worth my while to continue making videos like this. So I, d I do need a little bit of feedback and I do need to see what you're thinking. Uh, or maybe some of your suggestions, things you'd like to see me do. Um, so there you go, that's mixing it all around. And I'm gonna leave that for a couple of minutes and just let that cook. Uh, let it catch slightly on the bottom and then turn it again. Uh, th th there's something happens to cabbage when cabbage is fried and uh, especially if it's been boiled first and then fried uh, something amazing happens to cabbage um, it gives off a great flavour uh, in Britain we have a, a dish w that we call bubble and squeak and bubble and squeak uh, was leftover cabbage and leftover p potatoes uh, usually fried up next morning for breakfast and they just mix it all together uh, form it into patties or just mash it into the pan rather like this and fry it um, so you had a delicious potatoes and um, and cabbage dish and the thing with bubble and squeak is we used to burn it on the bottom so if you want to see a recipe for bubble and squeak we need to see your put comments down below okay and don't forget to tell your friends like and subscribe please because um, we need a bit of encouragement to carry on, really. Okie doke. There you go. And that's the cabbage. So you just turn that a couple of more times and it'll be ready to serve.